A little over three years ago, I had a funny idea to make a build for the highest HP character in three houses, Raphael. Which, by the way, is still one of my favorite videos I've ever made, so link in the description if you want to check it out, I highly recommend it. But, at the time, the value was 129, and it was actually a pretty viable build and resulted in an extremely powerful unit. This week, I had that same idea, but for Fire Emblem Engage. Little did I know that not only would I be creating a meme, but I would be discovering a very viable and powerful endgame build not just for this unit, but for many. This video is going to be split into two parts, the theory crafting and thought process, and the final build explanation and showcase. As with my usual long intros, I just want to thank everyone who's been watching my content and new to the channel, and ask you all to keep up the insane work with the likes and subscribes, it's really been helping to boost my videos and channel growth. Anyways, on to the process. In this game, stat caps are actually based on classes and not on the unit themselves, so we really only have one class with the HP to rule them all, and that's Berserker, with an HP of 96. In order to get this, we need to find the unit with the highest HP growth. At first glance, this video looked like it was going to be a Boucheron video. 85% base HP growth is the highest in the game, which he has. Add on to that 30% from Berserker, and another 15% from the Tiki Ring, and that's a total of 130% HP growth once he gets in the Berserker class. But Boucheron otherwise is kind of a weak unit. I know he has his fans, but he has pretty low strength growth, and it would be a bit of a slog to do this. I wanted to create a monster, so I went to the next best available unit. Meet Jean. Jean is a small British child who starts off as a frail little healer who punches like a wet noodle. You get him at level 1 just after clearing chapter 5 in his own paralogue, which means he starts off quite a bit behind your current team. When you initially look at him, it seems like he's destined for the bench, and his growths are nothing impressive, starting at 50% HP, 20% strength, 20% magic, 35% dex, 40% speed, which is kind of okay, 25% defense, 20% resistance, 25% luck, and 5% build. Out of all of these, only the speed is even remotely accessible, and it just looks like a wash of a unit, even after factoring in class growths. Except, I forgot one very important detail. Gene has a personal skill, and it's what makes him this game's monster of a growth unit and potentially the best unit in the game for every class. Gene has the personal skill expertise. In the game's description, it says it enhances stat growth upon leveling, but what the game doesn't tell you is that this skill actually doubles class growths, and then they're added on to his personal growths. So, looking at that 40% speed, if you're in the Swordmaster class, which adds on 20% speed normally, instead we're looking at 40% for Jean, bringing his total to 80% because of his base 40 already. In terms of magic, if you're in the Sage class with 30% magic growth, that's adding on a whopping 60% magic to bring his total up to 80%, etc, etc. You can see where I'm going with this and you just apply it across the board to any of his personal growths. And so in comes my funny idea. Since the Berserker class has a 30% HP growth and Gene has a 50% base, this means that he'll have a total of 110% HP growth when he promotes. So wait, why did I choose him over Boucheron if Boucheron has 5% higher growth? Well, that's simple, but it requires a bit of stat comparison, so here we go. Boucheron joins you at level 4 with a base of 29. Gene, when reclassed to Axe Fighter, ends up with a base of 27 HP and pretty much identical offense stats. His growth as an Axe Fighter is 100% in the HP department, meaning that he's guaranteed to have one more base HP than Boucheron does at level 4. Due to the way growth averages work, it'll take a long time for Boucheron to even catch up to Gene, let alone eclipse him in the HP department, and because of Gene's far superior growths in every other stat, I just went with him instead. Also yes, I know it's Jean, but I can't help myself, I, it just reads as Gene, I'm sorry, I apologize. You're gonna have to put up with it. Anyways, it's just way more fun to think that the bulkiest and most savage unit in the game is also a small kid who's running around and mauling units with the heaviest weapons in the game. Feels very Fire Emblem. Anyways, speaking of growths, let's detail how this is going to work. Unlike the Anna video, this build actually doesn't require any DLC to do, so for those of you who weren't happy with that, you can rejoice here. The 15% growth increase from Tiki will help you reach the stat caps faster, but here it isn't mandatory whatsoever and you'll have access to everything at a relatively early stage regardless. 
In Gene's case, the only thing we really need to get started is axe access, and there are two ways to do this early game. If you do have the DLC, then you can get it immediately via the Edelgard bracelet, and if you don't, then you get it via Leaf's Bond Ring at level 2. Since you get Leaf after Chapter 8, and the first time you can second seal a unit is also after Chapter 8, it doesn't even matter if you have Edelgard or not, since you'll be holding off on reclassing and leveling him until after Chapter 8 anyways. And I need to stress this really important point. Do not level him until after you've second sealed him into your desired class. Because of the way his growth doubling works, Gene might be the only unit in the game who you will harm if you promote him in Martial Monk and then reclass him. It's not completely make or break and it is salvageable, but he takes more of a hit in his stats here than anyone else because he's doubling the class growths. Either way, go ahead and learn your axe proficiency, and honestly, I'd just inherit all of Leaf's proficiencies because they'll let you reclass Gene in whatever class you want and unlock every single proficiency on him pretty much. And if there are any other units you want to reclass as well, you should do the same thing as soon as possible, just a little tip. After you've got that, immediately second seal him into the Axe Fighter class. Once you're there, this is how his growths are going to look. He'll have 100% HP growth, 60% strength, 20% magic, 45% dex, 60% speed, 35% defense, 20% resistance, and 15% build. If you have the DLC and want to add the Tiki Ring on top of this, he's also an excellent candidate for it, since it'll boost all of his growths by a further 15% and really let him hit those stat caps very early. I won't go through the growths again individually with the ring, but they should be side by side on your screen to reflect the bracelet anyways. Also, at this point, if you have the Edelgard bracelet, slapping on the lineage skill for increased EXP gain is a good idea as well to make him level a lot quicker. He's already behind, and especially in Maddening Mode where the EXP gain is much more limited, you'll probably want this. Also, he starts right off the bat with 300 SP, so that's a little bit of a boost that most characters don't normally have at level 1, I think. If I'm wrong, let me know. Once we have all this setup done, all that's left to do is, well, level him up. On the bright side, he's only spending 9 levels in this class, since once again, like Anna, we want to promote him as soon as possible at level 10 to make use of the added growths. And again, in Gene's case, the added growths double, so that 25% HP growth that goes to 30 is actually a 10% increase instead of a 5. Just like in the other video, I'll show you what his stats will look like as a level 10 axe fighter. For my own sanity and saving myself some time, I actually will be using Tiki in my video, but for those of you who don't have her, I'll have a side-by-side -side comparison of what his stats will look like with and without her. You can see, regardless of the DLC, he's going to have some very solid stat growths and will quickly catch up to the rest of your party, even at a low level. This will continue to have him eventually eclipse them drastically, especially in the mid to late game. Once he hits level 10, I'm promoting him to Berserker because of the aforementioned 30% HP growth. However, I wouldn't actually recommend anyone else to do this. The Warrior class has far better rounded growths and much better stat caps overall in Gene's case, and he benefits much more long term from being in that class at the expense of an only ever slightly lower HP and strength growth. Even for the sake of this video, the HP cap is 94 in Warrior versus 96 in Berserker. I'm just committed to the meme here. Either way, again, I'll show you another side-by-side -side comparison here of what his growths will look like as a Berserker, both with and without Tiki, so we can continue the story. You can see that at this stage, even without the DLC, you guys will start to have a chance to gain 2 HP stats per level, and that's really what's going to carry the build going forward. At level 20 Berserker, or 30 total overall level, this is what his stats will look like. Obviously, we aren't anywhere close to the HP cap, and he'll have to loop around a second time, and based on my calculations, on average, he'll hit 76 HP by level 11 on the second loop, or a total of 41 internal levels, which isn't that bad, honestly. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why only 76? Well, again, for the sake of my own sanity in this video, I have four Seraph robes, so that'll carry me to 96 from there. Keep in mind, these are the averages including Tiki, and an extra Seraph Rope via the DLC, so if you don't have them, it's just a little while longer than that, but you should be in the Warrior class anyways, and not worrying about HP. Also, I forgot to mention it, but the HP cap in this game is actually 116. I talked about this in my Anna video, and a lot of people were saying that skills don't overlap, and that's why she wasn't getting more than plus 20 to her luck. No, guys. Skills do overlap, not all of them, but the stat-boosting ones do stack with the equipped bond rings. And so HP, like all the other skills, has a plus 20 limit. So what this means is the HP cap is actually 116. 
I forgot to explain this, so I'm explaining it now, and the other 20 you will be able to get just from equipping someone like Corrin, who adds 15, or equipping HP plus 15 that you can inherit from Corrin, and then continuing the rest with a variety of other rings that you can get from any other unit. Anyways, I'm reaching the point in the script writing process where I have to actually get up and level Jean and put all this theory into action, but for you guys, it's going to be a small leveling montage and the snap of a finger and we'll move on to the build and bond ring portion. Boom, here we are, and look at that! My Jean is a total monster and completely combat ready now. At this stage, I was kinda like, great, what in the world do I want to do with this kid? He has a ton of HP, but he has miserable defenses and resistance, but a really impressive attack stat. He can't really take many hits as a result, and so I started my research. Logically, if I'm committing to the big HP, I might as well commit to the big attack, so I went ahead and grabbed myself a Silver Great Axe. The only problem is, this means that I'm going to have to get hit first on player phase in order to get my one-shots in, and so I grabbed myself a Killer Axe and I forged it to plus 5 with a crit engrave in order to get the most out of it. You'll eventually notice that I reverted back to before I gave my gene for Seraph Robes to cap his HP, and that's because, honestly, I found that he didn't really need it, so I reset my save file. Nothing wrong with giving them to him. I'm just greedy with my stat boosters and I hoard them. Anyways, now my Jean was a well-oiled killing machine on player phase, but what about enemy phase? If he's not able to tank, even with that huge HP pool, then what's the point if he's just gonna die after a few rounds of combat? And then it hit me. I fight for my friends. Ike is one of the strongest units in Fire Emblem history lore-wise, but up until now I hadn't really figured out his bond ring's usefulness. He has a skill that doesn't do anything for an entire turn while it charges up and lets everyone hit you. He gives some attack and defense at max bond level, and his weapons seem fairly average in comparison to everything else. His Lagu skill for having the damage received while engaged is nice, but since he seems to be tank based it didn't really make that big of a difference for me mitigation wise so far, and Resolve was actually the nicest part of his kit, because it has made my tanks even tankier. That is, this was what I had initially thought. Upon taking another look, it's clear that Ike is super synergistic for characters who aren't tanks. I was right about the 50% damage mitigation part. It's not helpful on a tank, but a unit who is taking 50 damage per round because of their low defense or resistance is now only taking 25, which is a massive reduction compared to, say, a character who's taking 8 damage and then it goes down to 4. With Resolve, they're getting 7 extra to defense and resistance to make that even less, and to add insult to injury, Wrath needing 30% HP loss to cap its 30% critical effectiveness works perfectly with someone with super high HP like my build. This is because I'm only losing about a quarter of my health bar before it's fully charged. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, Ike at max bond also gives you plus 7 max HP, plus 4 strength, and plus 5 defense just to make this build even more viable. Ike is perfect, and I instantly put this build into action. One thing to note, since these specials scale off the weapon you equip and you can't counter enemies while you're charging Great Aether anyways, you should always equip a smash weapon here. They have ridiculous amounts of might and will destroy most enemies. Actually, make this a rule of thumb for all your engaged special attacks. Most of them don't allow enemies to counter anyways, so why not? But this build was still missing a few things. One issue was that after Great Aether I still needed to survive on subsequent turns to really make a true juggernaut. And what skill works with lower HP? Vantage. Now one of the issues with Vantage is you need to try and inherit it relatively early on in the game if you can, and I won't say why for spoiler purposes, but you should do it by chapter 10 if you can. Luckily it has a 500 SP version so it's not that expensive. It can be challenging to get, and get Gene leveled and ready by then, but he'll still do well as most builds don't usually come entirely online until the late game when you have the SP for them anyways. Vantage will help you survive. With the disgusting HP and strength you're going to have on this Gene, he will most likely be one-shotting most enemies. If they're mages, they'll get one-shot by a tomahawk or hand axe. And if they're melee, then the plus 5 crit engraved killer axe will be at almost 100% crit and one-shot almost everything in the game. Yes, this includes the final boss, I'm not even kidding. So now we've solved the enemy phase issue. Or have we? There is still a second issue. One of the most harmful things in this game are the chain attacks when the enemies do them. Even if my gene were able to dodge the normal attacks, because chain attacks seem to be a fixed 80% hit rate and they always do 10% of your total HP, this bypasses Ike's mitigation and defense increases. At 116 HP, Jean is getting hit for a whopping 11 damage per chain attack, and sometimes the enemies line up 2, 3, and even 4 of them at a time, which will absolutely kill you before you can fire off Great Aether. And so I had to find a solution to this as well, and what a solution it was. Emblem Corrin has a skill called Pair Up. 
And what does the pair-up skill do? It completely nullifies follow-up attacks from enemies to make them do zero damage. There you go. Now you're pretty much invincible. Just as a quick recap for those of you who might have your head spinning right now, we have Wrath, which is inherent on Ike, giving us 30% crit. Resolve, which is also inherently on Ike, giving us 7 to defense and resistance. Vantage, which we inherited from Leaf, letting us go first. And Pair Up, which we inherited from Corden to block follow-ups. While engaged with Ike, we also get Lagoo's Friend to mitigate 50% of all damage coming at us, as well as Great Aether, which gives an additional plus 5 to defense and resistance while creating a massive ticking time bomb that will heal us of pretty much all the damage we've taken once it goes off. Keep in mind, skill inheritance is very expensive, so in order of priority, the most important skill is Pair Up, and then you can do Vantage Plus if you want, but save the final Vantage version until the very, very end. With all of this, as long as your unit has high HP, you will survive the onslaught of entire enemy teams, irrespective of your defense and resistance stats. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to use the Ike Ring for this. The Corrin Ring at max bond gives you a flat plus 15 HP just for existing, as well as the pair up skill. You'll miss out on one of either Wrath, Resolve, or Vantage, most likely Resolve, depending on how you want to tweak it, but in theory you can run two units like this just without the Great Aether Explosion. It'll also be far less tanky while engaged due to no Lagoo's friend, but in theory you can kind of run a bootleg version of this build on a second unit in your party at the same time. Of course, this build isn't limited just to Jean, it can also work on high HP bruiser units like Panette, who gets a very similar result from this, and is even boosted even further from her personal passive as well, which adds another 10 crit if she's below max HP. Boucheron can run it too as well, but he just won't have his high strength and so probably won't be one-shotting things unless you really pump him full of those steroid, I mean energy drops. And that's pretty much it. This adventure started as a meme for trying to hit the HP cap, but in the process I ended up finding a really strong build that will absolutely decimate enemies, even on Maddening. The downsides to this are that Great Aether is still susceptible to smash weapons, since they will push you away and ruin your positioning. There's also the fact that you have to start leveling Jean after Chapter 8 when you reclass him into Axe Fighter, and he'll need to be a bit babied so he can catch up, which can be annoying and sometimes difficult on Maddening. Also, you probably can do this with any type of tank, as long as you make sure the HP and strength are up to par. It really is pretty flexible and not unit specific. Feed your favorite unit the Seraph robes and energy drops and watch them destroy things, you're welcome. Otherwise, I don't know if I have much else to say, so make sure you all like the video, leave me a comment letting me know what you think, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace!